Hi everyone, here's Booker and I'm Vance and we're here to read another book to you. This time our book is going to be The Ghost of Sifty Sifty Sam. It's written by Angela Shelf Medeiros and it's illustrated by Jacqueline Rogers. And I will leave a link in the description so you can learn more about Angela Shelf Medeiros. She not only writes children's books, but she also writes cookbooks. She is known as the Kitchen Diva. And she writes for the newspaper. She's had her own show on PBS. She's just a very talented woman. And interestingly enough, she's a chef. And the main character, one of the main characters in this book, is also a chef. So she knows what she's talking about in this book. All right, well, let's get started with the book. The Ghost of Sifty Sifty Sam, written by Angela Self Medeiros, illustrated by Jacqueline Rogers. Deep down in the East Texas woods, where the wind wails through the tall pine trees, there stands a beautiful old house. That old house sits by a lake that's so clear, the moon uses it for a mirror. Now, folks in those parts say that the house is haunted by the ghost of Sifty Sifty Sam. When everything is still and dark, old Sam appears. That's when all the mischief starts. He wails and he howls and he rattles his chains. <clears throat> then he screeches so loud, it shakes the window panes. Old Sam roams around that house every night, scaring anyone who comes into sight. A realtor man had been trying to sell that old place for many a year. He finally offered a $5,000 reward to anyone brave enough and smart enough and crafty enough to stay in the house all night long. Folks thought if anyone came out of the next morning alive and kicking, that would rid the house of the ghost of Sifty Sifty Sam. Well, a chef named Dan thought he was brave enough and smart enough and crafty enough to stay in the house all night long. He was sure he'd come out the next morning alive and kicking. Dan wanted to collect the $5,000 reward from the realtor man and rid the house of the ghost of Sifty Sifty Sam. Dan took a bushel of groceries, a slab of fatback, and a frying pan into the old house that was haunted by the ghost of Sifty Sifty Sam. The sun had already drifted out of sight. Soon, the moon rose round and full and bright. Dan closed the curtains and locked all the doors. Then he looked in each closet, hoping and praying he wouldn't come face to face with the ghost of Sifty Sifty Sam, who was haunting that place. Dan sliced up his fat back and made a fire in the grate. He cooked his meat to a sizzle and got himself a plate, when suddenly, Dan thought he heard a sound, but he wasn't certain. A cool breeze blew into the room and gently parted the curtains. As Dan looked through the window of that shadowy room, he saw a boat just beyond the edge of the land and what looked like the head of a man. But it was hard to see in all the dark and gloom. Then a voice whispered in the wind. I'm the ghost of Sifty Sifty Sam. I'm on the lake near the man. Well, Dan had his pride and he wanted to win that $5,000 reward from the realtor man. So he closed the curtains and tried to pretend that what he heard and saw were only the wind. Then Dan heard that voice again, but it was louder this time. So he slipped over to the door, cracked it open a little bit, and scrunched up his eye to peer through the slit. Out on the porch there stood a man about seven feet tall, with a head and shoulders and chest and arms, but no legs at all. No legs at all. Then a wave of cold air whistled through the room. A loud voice said to Dan, I'm the ghost of Sifty Sifty Sam. I'm on the porch near the man. Dan slammed the door closed and threw the back window open wide. But before he could run outside, 
He heard a horrible wailing and moaning, and a blast of freezing wind rushed in. Then a man's head poked through the gloom, and bit by bit his arms and torso and legs appeared in the room. The ghost put himself together and roared at Dan. I'm the ghost of Sifty Sifty Sam. I'm in the room right next to the man. Then the most awful thing happened to poor Dan. His teeth started making music all by themselves. His knees knocked together and his shivering feet tapped on the floor in time to the beat. The ghost sniffed the air and snatched the frying pan from the grate. He ate and he ate and he ate. Then he drank all that burning hot grease down without making a single solitary sound. When he had finished all of Dan's meat, he looked around for something else to eat. But there was nothing left. The ghost had eaten every bite. So he turned to Dan and roared with all his might. I'm the ghost of Sifty Sifty Sam and I want some more. Well, Dan was so scared he jumped out of his shoes. But when he landed on the floor again, he knew exactly what to do. First, he grabbed some potatoes, some ground meat, and tomatoes, and with potato peels flying every which way, Dan cooked up a hash for that ghost in a flash. More, cried the ghost as he gobbled it all down. He looked at Dan with a horrible frown. Dan's hands shook as he scrambled a dozen eggs and buttered and toasted a loaf of bread. More, more, cried the ghost with a mighty bellow. Give me more food because I'm one hungry fellow. Dan trembled all over from head to toe and whipped up a pan of spicy gumbo. More, 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 cried the ghost as he wiped his plate clean. Give me more food right now. I'm feeling hungry and mean. Poor Dan cooked and cooked until the pan was red hot. But that ghost kept eating around the clock. He ate fried chicken and pancakes, squash and french fries, heaps of vegetables, mounds of potatoes, and six kinds of pies. He ate spaghetti and cornbread and dish after dish of Dan's crispy delicious batter dipped fish. As the pale pink of morning crept into the sky, old Sam rubbed his huge belly, belched, and said with a sigh, I've been hungry for the last 20 years. It's so hard to find a good meal around here. I sure appreciate all the wonderful food. I'd love to stay around here. Is there something I can do? Dan thought a while, then he whispered in the ghost's ear. When old Sam heard his request, he moaned and trembled with fear. Oh well, said the ghost as he licked a few crumbs from a dish. I'll do anything to get some more of that fish. Then, as the sun turned night into day, the ghost grabbed a donut and faded away. Dan collected his reward from the realtor man, then bought that old house, opened up a restaurant, and became famous all over the land. If you peek in the kitchen, You'll see Chef Dan. He cooks fried chicken and pancakes, squash and french fries, heaps of vegetables, mounds of potatoes, and six kinds of pies. He cooks spaghetti and cornbread and dish after dish of crispy, delicious, batter-dipped fish. And over by the sink, the ghost of Sifty Sifty Sam is washing every messy pot, dish, and pan. Dan never wanted to wash dishes again, and he got his wish. After old Sam has washed every last dish, Dan rewards him with crispy, delicious, batter-dipped fish. Well, it looks like Booker's ready to go play with his sister Sassy, so that's all for today. See you next time.